Let's start with Donald Trump Jr., shall we? Talking to Jesse Waters on Fox News. Here's what he had to say about Kamala Harris's interview. This was her first real aggressive questioning. How do you think she fared? Uh, I think that was a major failure. And the reality is, Jesse, you don't go on Brett Baer if you're winning. This is an act of desperation from a desperate person. She's not going to do anything differently. She cut and pasted Joe Biden's policies and didn't even change the source code when a month after her coup, because, you know, she likes to talk about democracy, but didn't win a single vote in her primary to become the Democratic nominee. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. The people that she talks about intelligence that say Trump is unstable, those are the same people that signed off on the Hunter Biden laptop being Russian disinformation. We know that's all a lie. It's an abject disaster for her. Kamala Harris is out there and she's trying to vie for this position of president of the United States. And the only person and she's running against not only Donald Trump, but she's running against herself. And that's probably why it's so difficult. That's probably why I mean, you can't when you're running against two people and one of them is yourself. You're it's a really it's a really bad spot to put yourself in. And he's 100 percent right. The only reason she went on this Fox interview in the first place is because she had to. Her campaign was doing so badly. She had no momentum. She had no ideas. Nobody believed her. She was berate. She was having Barack Obama berate uh, young black men. She was uh, stealing Donald Trump's campaign policy positions. She didn't. She had no plan for the future, and she was dodging the media. So she had no choice but to go on a media blitz. And somebody in her campaign staff said, "Hey." You got to go on Fox News. And the joy vibe was killed. Immediately, we saw that this is not a an election about joy. This is an election where we need a serious person who can come in and tackle serious problems. Serious problems like immigration. Serious problems like the economy. Serious problems like you know, foreign policy and the threat of invasions and economic uh, warfare, all these things that, quite frankly, everybody trusts Donald Trump about. And Brett Bayer asked her about that. And uh, <laughs> and she said uh, she said this. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What are, <laughs> what are you talking about, lady? Hey, listen, I want to talk to you about something real quick before we get to the rest of this interview, which, by the way, is we haven't even gotten to the good parts yet. But before we get to that, I wanted to, so I was I, I was watching this video earlier today about testosterone, and I know what you're thinking. Mark Kay, you're such a manly man. Why would you need to watch a video about testosterone? And it's a fantastic point, but I want to show you this because uh, I was watching this video about testosterone, and I learned a couple of things. I learned that there are certain foods that kill your testosterone and certain foods that actually boost your testosterone. Most guys think it's being drained by age or bad genetics or lack of exercise, but it's not that case. It has nothing to do with the gym. It has everything to do with the kitchen. And there is one food that has been found scientifically to devastate testosterone levels and most men uh, have no idea what that is. It's not junk food. It's not sugar. And in a way, it's something that they tell you. This is the worst part. It's something they tell you is good for you. But it turns out if you're a man and you want high testosterone levels, it's the total opposite. Uh, I was shocked. I told my wife about it. She goes, really? Uh, there's a uh, there's a company called V Shred. And they are the team behind cutting edge fitness and nutrition strategies. You may have seen them in all these, uh, you know, the shape magazine, muscle and fitness. I don't read those magazines, but I know that they're in there. And if you remove this one testosterone killing food from your diet, it could potentially unlock your body's true potential. Now, this is the video that I watched. I'm showing it to you there on the screen. If you want to see it for yourself, it's fascinating. So go watch this video. It's at sculptnation.com slash MK sculptnation.com slash mk and per usual i put it uh, in the description of this video so it's easy for you to find later on sculptnation.com slash mk if you want more testosterone you gotta it's amazing i'm really excited about i'm really excited about my my testosterone explosion that that's that not that look there are some real questions and there are some real issues and there are some real problems we have with this country and Kamala Harris is not really the answer to any of those problems. Kamala Harris is the problem. Um, and one of the things that Brett Baer was really good about is pointing out that, look, despite what you say and despite what you may be telling people, most of Americans in this country don't really want you to be the next president of the United States. And it's not just racist white people from the suburbs. It's also black voters and it's Latino voters. I, I, I. Yo voy a votar. Yo voy a votar. Donald Trump. Yeah, anyway, 
I'm, I'm sorry if I know that scared probably a bunch of people. Um, but that's you know, and and so so here, what is your plan to do about that? Why do you think that is? And she just, of course, had no answers. Here he is asking. Uh, here he is asking about the um, trust that people show in her opponent, who she says is a threat to democracy. Why do you think more people say they trust him on the economy than they trust you? I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as president of the United States. It has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump. People are ready to chart a new way forward. And they want a president who has a plan for the future and a plan that is sound and will strengthen our country. My plan for the economy does exactly that. And now we don't know what her plan for the economy is because she doesn't really have one. And whatever plan she has is just Joe Biden's plan that she cut and pasted and put on her website. So it's really weird for her to sit here and say, you know, my plan for the economy, blah, 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 blah. But Brett Baer points out to her that, look, People, you know, you keep talking about turning the page, turning the page, but you're the one that's been here for, what, three and a half years? Frankly, exhausted of Brett. More than people 70% are of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, wait, what? Wait, 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 what did she say? Donald Trump has been running for office? Donald Trump has been running for office. Hold on, where's the, hold on, I gotta, I gotta get that clip, because that just, I, what even, let's play that one, let's play that one again, because I'm not sure what she's trying to say there. Frankly, exhausted of Brett. More than people 70% of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person who in the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I president. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, lady? She's and Donald, her answer. This is, by the way, when whoever was in the room, and we know exactly what happened next, just where they were like, end it. Pull the plug, end it. This is over. This is abort, abort, is what they were yelling. Uh, this is the worst answer anyone's ever given, I think. He says to her, the country's on the wrong, wrong track. A whole bunch of Americans, 70 plus percent of Americans say the country's on the wrong track. And you know who the engineer is right now? You and Joe Biden. Three and a half years of you and Joe Biden and over 70 percent of Americans, Democrats and Republicans say the country's on the wrong track. You've been running the joint for three and a half years. And she looks at him squarely in the eye and says, and Donald Trump's been running for office. Right, because your policies are horrible. Donald Trump's been running for office. What is it? Donald Trump has been running for office. I mean, what is it? Yes, he has. Thank God. Thank God somebody's running for office other than you and Joe Biden. <laughs> what kind of an answer is that? That's when Brett Byers, I, frankly, I have no idea what you're talking about. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, lady? What are you talking about, woman? Please. Please just answer the question. She lost it several times during this interview. She just started yelling incoherently. Whenever there was some issue that she didn't have an answer for, she would just start going back and she would just start yelling and screaming about, about Donald Trump. Here was one of her uh, big meltdowns. He talked about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. I don't know what he's talking about unless he's talking about the criminals and the corrupt politicians who've been breaking the law. Yeah, I mean, that's, I would, I think we want criminals locked up and not, you know, roaming the streets, killing people like the Democrats prefer to have them. It was always back to Donald Trump. He asked her this question about Iran 
because she said the biggest threat to the United States of America was Iran. And guess what she did? She brought Donald Trump back into the, I don't even know what, I, don't, I couldn't even follow it. A number of extra, experts thought you would say China. Um, the FBI director had said that. But you said Iran. If that's the case, what do you say to critics uh, who look at the actions of your administration and say you're not acting like Iran is the number one threat? Well, I, I will tell you most recently, whether it was in April or in October, and then several hours on each occasion that Iran posed a threat to Israel. I was there. Uh, most recently in the Situation Room, in the most recent attack, working with the heads of our military and doing what America must always do to defend and to support Israel in its requirement to defend itself and to give American support to be able to allow Israel to have the resources to defend itself against attack, including from Iran and Iran's terrorist proxies in the region. Right. And that is proxies and, were and funded my by commitment Iran. to that is unyielding and unwavering. Critics just say that you either relaxed or failed to, to enforce sanctions on Iran, allowing all of this money to flow let, into Iran, like let, billions let, let's in Let's go back to Donald profits. Trump, there it is. Who, pulled that, out of, who pulled out of a deal that would have actually put but here Iran the, in check. The estimates and in billions it was during Donald Trump's that administration towards that the Iran, Iran regime. That, 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 I mean, he's, uh, you know, you gotta get, he's trying to be so polite. He doesn't want to tell her to please shut up and answer the question. He's holding back with every, I can never do this by this is why I'm not a journalist. I'm not a journalist. I'm never again, ever. One person once called me a journalist. I was like, what? No, do you even know what a journalist looks like? It's not me. So I'm sitting here and I'm, and I'm talking to these, or I'm sorry, and I'm watching this and I'm like, what is she, what is she even saying here? She's saying that Donald Trump is the reason that Iran has all of this money. Donald Trump bankrupted Iran. Donald Trump's not the one who dumped cash on Iran's runways. That was that was Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And then she was the one that cut off oil production, started purchasing from Iran again and made them billions of dollars. Oh, I guess we're done with that clip. Uh, and that is that. But that was her go to. Let's get back to Donald Trump. Let's get back to Donald Trump. Um Somewhere around there, Brett Bayer got the hard rap signal. Madam Vice President, and they're giving I, me a hard I, rap. Well, here. I thank you for the time. I thank you for the it's time. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, that was the end of the interview, but it wasn't the end of Brett Bayer because, you know, he had more to say and people wanted the behind the scenes story. So he went on Sean Hannity's show and he went on with Martha McCallum and he told everybody exactly what happened. He told everybody about how they ended the, how they started the interview late. Um, you know, when the kicker in football, uh, they call a timeout. Uh, right before he's going to kick the field goal. Uh, they're icing the kicker. So we were supposed to start at 5 p.m. Uh, we This was the time they gave us. Originally, we were going to do 25 or 30 minutes. Um, they came in and said, well, maybe 20. Uh, so it was already getting whittled down. And then um, the vice president showed up about 5.15. We were pushing the envelope to be able to turn it around for the top of the 6 o'clock. So um, that's how it started. And I could tell when we started talking that she was going to be tough to, to you know, redirect uh, without me trying to interrupt. I did this with President Obama. At one point, I just said, Mr. President, I know you like the filibuster. Um, I just didn't even have the chance uh, to sometimes redirect in those ways. I had a lot of other questions. Yeah, redirect is a nice way to put it. So they showed up late. And they left early. They they were trying to ice the kicker. They were trying to ice Brett Bear. So he jumped. So he's like, let me just jump right in with all this immigration stuff. That's why he tried to cut her off. That's why she tried to filibuster. That's why she tried to bring in all this unnecessary information that didn't that didn't make any sense in the grand scheme of things or in the concept of things. And then at the very end of it, they just started going ballistic. Dana, you've been on the other side. You've been on the the rapper as a uh, press secretary interviewing a, a president. And you know, I'm talking like four people waving their hands like it's you gotta stop uh so martha final yeah um i had to dismount there at the end <laughs> there's so many things and she maybe should do more of these oh he's saying <laughs> the burn maybe you should do more of these and then you would you know be better at them is exactly what that's brett bayer that's his that's his way of you know on the dl just you know leaving her with a yeah you should do more interviews mrs uh vice president madam vice president because you're not very good at them